Now, as far as the dividend uh, income is concerned, so following are the rates. If the dividend falls uh, between the basic rate band, then the rate of uh, income tax on dividend is 7.5%. If dividend falls uh, in the higher rate band, then on additional income, the rate is 32.5. And if dividend falls in the additional rate band, then the rate is 38.1%. Remember that first we have to tax the non-saving income, then the saving income, and then the dividend income. And there is uh, one thing more. The first 2000 of dividend income is uh, to be taxed at 0% rate, and that is called dividend nil rate band. And it is uh, always available, irrespective of the type of the person, whether it's uh, the basic rate taxpayer or the additional rate taxpayer. Now we'll calculate income tax liability against dividend income. So dividend income is 42,500 and as there is no other income, so personal allowance is available. After deduction of personal allowance, the taxable income is 30,000. As uh, this is a basic rate income, so first and RB 2000 at the rate of 0% and then the remaining dividend income that is out of 30,000 the remaining dividend income is 28,000 it is to be taxed at the basic rate that is 7.5% and total income tax liability is 2100. Let's add one more income for example dividend is 30,000 employment income is 22,500 employment income is a type of non-saving income now as there are two types of income so better to formulate uh, this pro forma so non-saving income then dividend income and a total so first of all employment income part of non-saving income dividend income part of dividend column so total income we have 22,500 30,000 dividend total income is 52,500 before personal allowance and then we have we have to deduct personal allowance of course and the taxable non-saving income is 10,000. Taxable dividend income is 30,000. Total taxable income is 40,000. 40,000 means that the uh, income is uh, in higher rate band, more than 37,500. So let's uh, see how we can tax this as per the rates. So first of all, we have to apply income tax rate on the uh, non-saving income and then on the dividend income. So we have non-saving income 10,000. So non-saving income 10,000. So the basic rate is applicable on this, that is 20%. And uh, the tax is 2,000. So we have covered non-saving income 10,000. Now dividend is 30,000. So dividend first portion is uh, NRB. So 2000 of dividend is 0%. So this is 0. Now, the first band ended at 37,500. So the remaining portion of dividend income that falls in first band is 37,500 minus 12,000. So the space in first band is 25,500. And the rate will be applicable the 7.5 percent so 25,500 into 7.5 percent and that is 1912.5 the total dividend income is 30,000 and we have covered up till now out of 30,000 we have covered 25500 minus 2000 that is 27500 so the remaining balance that falls in the second band is 32 point uh, 22500 and it is to be taxed at uh, the higher rate band that is uh, 32.5 so the tax liability becomes 812.5 and in this way our total tax liability will be 4725 
let's move to another example now in this example we have uh, property income 60000 dividend income 100000 calculate income tax liability as uh, the total income is uh, more than 100000 uh, and 125000 so personal allowance becomes zero and uh, the taxable total income is 160000 out of which property income which is a non saving income you can also prepare a pro forma and this is uh, dividend income so first of all we have to apply tax on the property income so non saving the first portion of property income falls under basic rate band that is uh, 7500 now the remaining property income is 60000 so the remaining property income is uh, out of 60000 37500 so the remaining portion is uh, 60000 minus comes to the 22500 it falls under the second band the rate is double now that is 9000 So in this way, we have covered the sixty thousand of thousand of property income, and now we have dividend income. So we will cover the band first, NRB first. So dividend NRB is first two thousand at the rate of zero percent. Now, as we are in the second band, and the limit of second band is one lakh fifty thousand. So we have to identify how much uh, is the available amount. And uh, thirty-seven thousand five hundred plus twenty-two thousand five hundred plus two thousand. So sixty-two thousand have already covered out of one fifty. So remaining is eighty-eight thousand. And as it's second band, so the dividend rate is applicable thirty-two point five. So on eighty-eight thousand. Zero point three two five. That is twenty eight thousand six hundred. Now, part of dividend is to be taxed in the additional rate band. So up till now we have covered ninety thousand of dividend, and total dividend was one hundred thousand. So one hundred thousand we have covered up till now ninety thousand. So the remaining dividend is ten uh, thousand at the rate of thirty-eight point one. So this is three eight one zero. Now the total liability is seven five double zero plus nine thousand plus twenty-eight thousand six hundred and three eight one zero, and that comes out to be four eight nine one zero. And this is our tax. liability let's move on to another question now we have been provided with property income 30000 now we have saving income as well and dividend income as well so all three sources of income is given in this question one is the non saving other is saving and other is dividend calculate income tax liability we have created a pro forma non saving income saving income and dividend income list down all the income first property then saving then dividend and identify the total income as our total income is uh, less than 100000 so the whole pa is available 12500 deduct it from the non saving income in order to get a value of uh, taxable non saving income and then taxable saving income and then taxable dividend income total taxable income is 57500 now we have to apply the rate income tax liability so how we can do this 17500 uh, the person is uh, beyond the basic rate band so non saving income 17500 non saving income 17500 first rate is applicable that is 20% And uh, seventeen thousand five hundred into point two, that is three thousand five hundred. Now the interest income is ten thousand. So 
claiming NRB uh, is on one thousand. Let me check if the person is a uh, is in higher rate band. So this is not to be one thousand. Rather, now it's on five hundred. So the remaining saving income after considering this is nine thousand five hundred. As we are in the basic band, so the rate is nine five double zero into twenty percent, and uh, we have rate of. Uh, now let's focus on dividend income. So after applying dividend income, we will be out from the basic rate band. So partial dividend income will be a part of basic rate, and partial will be a part of the higher rate. So dividend is thirty thousand. So first of all, the dividend NRB and uh, first two thousand is at thirty percent, and then the remaining dividend income that falls within the first band is thirty seven thousand. Five hundred. Five. Find out the difference. So in this way, we have uh, seventeen thousand five hundred, five hundred, nine thousand five hundred, and two thousand. So minus thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Eight thousand is the remaining balance in the first band, and the rate is applicable at seven point five percent. So six hundred. Now remaining dividend. We have covered ten thousand out of thirty thousand. So ten thousand is being covered. So the remaining portion is twenty thousand, and the second rate will be applicable. That is thirty two point five percent. And that is six five double zero. So in this way, the total tax liability becomes twelve thousand five hundred. Now there is another situation in which uh, we can apply. Starting rate of zero percent. Zero percent on saving income. This is other than the saving income NRV, and this is only applicable if saving income falls. Within first five thousand of taxable income. There are two possible situation in which this zero percent rate will be applicable on saving income. First situation is that where there is no Non saving income, then this concept is applicable. And second situation is that where non saving income, taxable non saving income, is less than five thousand. I'll be discussing both situations. So first of all, when there is no non saving income, so assuming we have. Uh, Interest income of ten thousand. Uh, say suppose is twenty thousand, and we have uh, for simplicity purpose just take one value. So we have to deduct um, in this way. We have uh, total income of twenty thousand, and deduct the PA. PA is twelve thousand five hundred. So the remaining income comes to be seven thousand five hundred taxable saving income. There is no non-saving income, so the starting rate concept will be applicable in such a way. Then 
सेविंग इनकम फर्स्ट फाइव थाउजेंड सेविंग इनकम मल्टीप्लाई बाय जीरो परसेंट इट इज स्टार्टिंग रेट देन मिल रेट बैंड ऑफ वन थाउजेंड आल्सो बेनिफिशियल एंड द रिमेनिंग सेविंग इनकम फॉल्स इन द बेसिक रेट बैंड इट्स uh 6000 we have already covered the remaining is 1500 and the basic rate is applicable so the tax liability is only 300 so this is the first situation where there is no non saving income but what if if there is a saving income so for example we have uh, property income 15000 we have uh, interest income that is uh, 10000 and we have to calculate income tax liability in this way a performa is needed non saving income and saving income and a total column so we have uh, property 14000 we have uh, interest and that is 10000 the total value becomes Fourteen thousand, ten thousand, and twenty-four. This is total income. Now we have to apply personal allowance claim. Personal allowance claim is twelve thousand five hundred. So this is eight uh, hundred. Ten thousand, so eleven thousand five hundred. This is taxable income. Now we have non-saving income, but it is less than five thousand. So starting rate concept will be applicable. But first we will apply the rate on non-saving income because uh, always we have to apply tax on non-saving income first. That is fifteen hundred. So fifteen hundred uh, into twenty percent. And that is three hundred. Now, after that, first five thousand saving income. How much saving income falls under first five thousand? That is three thousand five hundred. So this three thousand five hundred will attract a rate of zero percent. So the first five thousand has covered. Now the remaining saving income all NRB. So one thousand at the rate of zero percent NRB. Now the remaining saving income will be taxed at the basic rate, and the total saving income was ten thousand. So out of this, we have covered three thousand five hundred starting one thousand NRB. So four thousand five hundred is covered. So we have five thousand five hundred. Yes, multiply by twenty percent. Yes, it's eleven uh, hundred. It's eleven hundred, and the total tax liability becomes fourteen. In this way, in this lecture, we have covered all the dividend income calculation and starting rate concept of. saving income